Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Chapter 16 The Divine and Demoniac Nature Natures <clears throat> Text 1 to 3. Shri Bhagavan Vacha Abhayam Sattva Samsutir Jnana Yoga Vyavasthita Dhanam Dhamascha Yagnascha Swadhyaya Stapa Arjavam Ahimsa Satyam Akrodas Tyaga Santi Apaishunam Daya Bhuteswa Alo Luktuam Mardavam Hri Achapalam Tejakshamadriti Socham Adroho Nati Manita Bhavanti Sampadam Daivim Abhijatasya Bharata The Supreme Personality of God had said, Fearlessness, purification of one's existence, cultivation of spiritual knowledge, charity, self-control, performance of sacrifice, study of the Vedas, austerity, simplicity, non-violence, truthfulness, freedom from anger, renunciation, tranquility, aversion to fault finding, compassion for all living entities, freedom from covertness, gentleness, modesty, steady determination, vigor, forgiveness, fortitude, cleanliness, and freedom from envy and from the passion for honor, these transcendental qualities, O son of Bharat, belong to godly men endowed with divine nature. Text four. Dambo darpo bimanascha krodha parushyam evacha agna agnanam chabijatasya Partha Sampadam Asurim. Pride, arrogance, conceit, anger, harshness, and ignorance, these qualities belong to those of demoniac, demoniac nature, O son of Park. Text 5. Daivi Sampadavi Mokshaya. Nibandhaya Surimata Masucha Sampadam Daivi Abhijato Sipandava The transcendental qualities are conducive to liberation, whereas the demo uh, demoniac qualities make for the bondage. Do not worry, O son of Pandu, for you are born with the divine qualities. Next week. Dvo bhuto sargo lokes mean Daiva asura evacha Daivo vistaras a propta asuram partha meshunum. O son of Pitta, in this world there are two kinds of created be beings. One is called the divine and the other is called demoniac. I have already explained to you at length the divine qualities. Now hear from me of the demoniac. Text seven. Pravrutimcha nivrutimcha janana vidur asura na socham na pichacharo those who are demoniac 
do not know what it is to be done and what is not to be done. Neither cleanliness nor proper behavior nor truth is found in them. They say this world is unreal with no foundation, no God in control. They say it is produced of sex desire and has no cause other than lust. Text 9. Etam dristim avastapya nastapmanolpa buddhaya prabhavanti ugra parmana kashyaya jagato hita Following such conclusions, the demoniac who are lost to themselves and who have no intelligence engage in unbeneficial, horrible works meant to destroy the world. Text 10. Kamam ashritya dushpuram dambamanam adanvitaha mohat grihitva sad Taking shelter of insatiable lust and absorbed in the conceit of pride and false prestige, the demoniac, thus illusioned, are always sworn to unclean work attracted by the impermanent. Text 11 and 12. Chintam apari meyam cha pralayantam upashita kamok bhoga parama eta vad iti nishchita asha pasha sate bhadda kamakro da parama they believe that to gratify the senses is the prime necessity of human civilization. Thus, until the end of life, their anxiety is immeasurable. Bound by a network of hundreds of thousands of desires and absorbed in lust and anger, they secure money by illegal means for sense gratification. Text 13 to 15. Idam adhya maya labdam imam prapya se manoratam idam asti dam apime bhavishyati punardhanam aso maya hata satru a demoniac person thinks, so much wealth do I have today and I will gain more according to my schemes. So much is mine now and it will increase in future more and more. He is my enemy and I've killed him and my other enemies will also be killed. I am the Lord of everything. I am the enjoyer. I am perfect, powerful, and happy. I am the richest man surrounded by aristocratic relatives. There is none so powerful and happy as I am. I shall perform sacrifices. 
I shall give some charity, and thus I shall rejoice. In this way, such persons are deluded by ignorance. Text 16. Aneka chitta vibranta moha jala samabruta prashapta kama bhogeshu patanti narakesu cho. Thus, perplexed by various anxieties and bound by a network of illusions, they become too strongly attached to sense enjoyment and fall down to, into hell. Text 17. Atma Yajante Self complacent and always impudent, delude by wealth and false prestige, they sometimes proudly perform sacrifices in name only, without following any rules or regulations. Text 18. Ahankaram balam darpam, kamam krodam cha sanshitaha, mamatma paradeheshu, pra Bewildered by false ego, strength, pride, lust and anger, the demons become envious of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, who is situated in their own bodies and in the bodies of other, and blasphemy against the real, real religion. Text 19. Shripami Ajrasham Ahuban Ashrusli those who are envious and mischievous, who are the lowest among men, are perpetually cast into the ocean of material existence, into various demoniac species of life. Text 20. Asurin yonim apana. Muda janmani 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 mama aprapyaiva konteya tato yanti adhamam gatim. Attaining repeated birth amongst the species of the demoniac life, O son of Kunti, such persons can never approach me. Gradually, they sink down to the lowest abominable type of existence. Text 21. Trividam narakeshyedam dwaram nashanam atmana kama krodash tathalobha tasmat eta triyam trajet there are three gates leading to this hell, lust, anger, and greed. Every sane man should give this up, for they lead to degradation of the soul. Text 22. Acharati. Atmana Shayas Tato Yati Parangatim. The man who has escaped these three gates of hell, O son of Kunti, performs act conducive to self realization and thus gradually attains the supreme destination. Text 23. Yasatra Vidim Ust. 
उत्सृज्य वर्तते काम कारता न स सिद्धि अवाप्नोती न सुख न सुखम न पराम गतिम he who discards scriptural injunctions and acts according to his own whims attains neither perfection nor happiness nor the supreme destination 624 tasmaj chhastram para paramanam te nas tasmaj chhastram pramanam te कार्य कार्य व्यवस्थित ज्ञातवा शास्त्र विधानोक्त कर्म कर्तुम इहर हसी वन शुड देयरफॉर अंडरस्टैंड व्हाट इज ड्यूटी एंड व्हाट इज नॉट ड्यूटी बाय द रेगुलेशंस ऑफ द स्क्रिप्चर्स नोइंग सच रूल्स एंड रेगुलेशंस वन शुड एक्ट सो दैट ही मे ग्रेजुअली बी एलिवेटेड हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण ओम तत्सदिति श्रीमद् भगवत गीता शु उपनिषद सु ब्रह्म विद्याया योग शास्त्रे श्री कृष्ण अर्जुन संवादे दैव आसुर संपद विभाग योगो नाम षोदश अध्याय हरे We can't hear you, Prabhu. Thank you, Mataji. I was on mute. Thank you uh, for the recitation earlier uh, to you, Mataji, and Nana Mataji. That was really nice. Hi, Krishna. So today we will be covering text seventeen. Atma sambhavita stabda dana mana madanvita yajante nama yagnaste. दम्बे उटिपूर्वकमेनाधिपूर्वकमेनाधिपूर्वकमेनाधिपूर्वकमेनाधिपूर्वकमेनाधिपूर्वकमेनाधिपूर्वकमेनाधिपूर्वकमेनाधिप
one has to follow. The word avidhi purvakam, meaning a, meaning a disc, disregard for the rules and regulations, is specially stressed here. These things are always due to ignorance and illusion. I'll read the translation once again. Self-complacent and always impudent, deluded by wealth and false prestige. They sometimes proudly perform sacrifices in name only without following any rules or regulations. O Magyana Timirandasya Kyanan Jana Shalakaya Chakshurun Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Guru Venamaha Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prashtaya Bhutale Shri Mate Bhakti Vedanta Swami Tinamine Namaste Sarsvati Deve Gauravani Pracharine Nirvishesha Shunyavadi Pasha Tedeshatarine Vanchakal Pata Rupyascha Kripa Sindhu Bevacha Patita Nam Pavane Bhyo Vaishnavebhyo Namo Namaha Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadha Shiva Sadikar Bhakta Vinda Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Srila Prabhupada's purports are so illuminating. Even for a simple verse like this, he really breaks it down for our clarity so nicely. Um, I think... Yesterday's uh, theme will will continue today because um, in my opinion, correct me if I'm wrong, this verse is really verse is really resembling the life of Hiranika Shipu at its best, actually. Uh, and, and I was thinking about it today when I was reading the verse of an hour or so ago as well. I was thinking, wow, what a stark, wonderful connection between this verse of Bhagavad Gita and a wonderful story of Hiranyakashipu and Prahlad Maharaj, which was to come, you know, in Bhagavatam. So it's so it's not a coincidence. It is quite uh, an interesting element of our scriptures that a Bhagavad Gita, which was directly spoken by the Lord, because the Bhagavad Gita and Bhagavatam they are in complete sync. One is the philosophy, and other is a realized knowledge of that philosophy, uh, which is based on the stories from from uh, the scriptures. So. On one hand, we hear the description of these demoniac personalities through the philosophy like Bhagavad Gita. And on the other hand, we have the live examples of personalities like Hiranyakashipu, who really makes our job easier to understand that, oh, wow, these tendencies were there to a larger extent in some demons, and they're there in our, in our own self, actually, to some degree or other. So the so what I would really like to do is today, I'd like to go through some of the verses from 7th Canto of Srimad Bhagavatam, and we can all probably take turn and read few verses and really see this mentality unfolding in front of ourselves through the pastime of Hiranyakashipu and how we can guard against that pit in which we can also fall or sometimes probably fall and get up, fall and get up. So the theme of this particular verse is that demoniac, hypocritical nature and teachings are described here. Being self-complacent and impudent, they are deluded by wealth and false prestige. So, I mean, classic example is Hiranyak Kashipu. He was completely deluded with this false prestige and the power he thought he had. And then they proudly performed sacrifices in name only without following any rules or regulations. You know, he did the austerity, not keeping Lord Vishnu or Krishna as a goal of his life, but only in the sake of getting some powers, he was praying to Brahma, thinking Brahma to be the supreme personality. And then their hypocritical religious observances cannot save them. You see, did, did all those ob observance of Hiranyakashipu save him? Not at all. So um, what I'll do is I'll try to bring up the Veda pace and we can read some verses together from Srimad Bhagavatam because these are such nice verses. Um, We bring the right chapter, seven canto. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna. Uh, 
Okay, great. All right. So let me share my screen now. So we can start with, um, I have Ajay Prabhu and Amritanand Prabhu, Bhagwati Mataji. I'm going to call out the names. Whoever is available can read maybe two, two verses at a time. Um, and, and that way we can absorb ourselves in Srimad Bhagavatam. And then I'll call out a few more names. So it's Ajay, Amritanand Prabhu, Bhagwati Mataji, Bharti Mataji, Chandra Chaitanya Prabhu, uh, Deepak uh, Prabhu, uh, Dev Krishan Prabhu. So, and then I'll, I will do some more names. Great. All right. So just the English, uh, we're going to cover the translation and then I'll discuss some key points from this. Um, so this, just to give you a bit of a background, this chapter is entitled The Science of God. Uh, from the Canto 7, Chapter 4. And this is the very outset of the chapter where Brahma has just descended from the Brahma Lok after being requested by all the Devatas to come down and stop Hiranyakashipu before he blocks the air and, and completely uh, makes their life hell uh, for all the demigods. And now Brahma is descending and this is that background of the verse and the benedictions which are coming forth. And then we will see how how Hiranyakashipu becomes impudent, he becomes deluded with that false prestige and how his fall down. Well, let's see how far we go, but I really wanted to try and absorb ourselves. So please, as much as possible, give your attention to these words of Srimad Bhagavatam for the next 20 minutes, and then we'll discuss key points from the verse to try and bring that relation back into the Bhagavad Gita verse today. So please, Prabhuji, uh, Ajay Prabhu. Prabhuji, can you make it slightly bigger if you can, please, the screen? Okay, Prabhu, just bear with me. Now I'm using uh, my son's laptop. How do you, hang on a minute, where must, where could I be going from here? I did see. It's a touch screen laptop, you can yourself enlarge it. Uh, actually, it's not touch screen, Mataji. I'm going to do it. No, here. for the pay for the devotees who will have that screen, you know. Oh, I see. Yeah, that's a good point. But I'm I'm going to do. Uh, I managed to find zoom in. Uh, I need to do it one more time, and then we are good. Okay. Um, Thank you, Prabhu. No problem. What we're going to do is bear with me. We're going to go into the default view, advanced view. And in that, we are going to see just the verses, uh, no, synonyms. We don't need text. We don't need Devnavi. We don't need, we'll keep to translation and purport if there is any. So Prabhu, if you could read the first two translations, that'll be great. Yes, Prabhu, thank you. Narad Muni continued, Lord Brahma was very much satisfied by adhering Akashiku's austerities, which were difficult to perform. Therefore, when solicited for benedictions, he indeed granted them, although they were rarely to be achieved. Text two. Lord Brahma said, O oh, Hiranyakashiku, these benedictions for which you have asked are difficult to obtain for most men. Nonetheless, O oh my son, I shall grant you them, although they are generally not available. Ajay Mukunda Prabhu, will you please read this illuminating purport as well? Just this one, actually. I don't want to miss this purport. Okay. Material benedictions are not exactly worthy of being called benedictions. If one possesses more and more, a benediction itself may become a curse. For just as achieving material opulence in this material world requires great strength and endeavor, the result of benediction would be very difficult for Hiranyakashipu to maintain. Nonetheless, since Brahma had promised, he wanted to grant all the benediction asked. The word Durlabhan indicates that one should not take benedictions one cannot enjoy peacefully. Jai. Please bear this purple in mind as much as possible, and we'll have some reflections later on. Um, yeah. So, whoever was next on the on the on the list of the devotees, kindly read the next two verses, please. Okay, Hare Krishna. Uh, the Lord Brahma, who awards infallible benedictions, departed, being worshipped by the best of the demons, Hiranyakashipu, and being praised by the great sages 
and saintly person. Text 4. The demon Hiranyakashipu, having thus been blessed by Lord Brahma and having acquired a lustrous golden body, continued to remember the death of his brother and therefore be envious of Lord Vishnu. You can also read that small purple Prabhu of this verse. Uh, a demoniac person, in spite of acquiring all the op opulences possible to obtain in this universe, continues to be envious of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Thank you, Prabhu. Who do we have next for reading these two verses text, together? Text 5 to 7, translation. Hiran Kashipu became the conqueror of the entire universe. Indeed, that great demon conquered all the planets in the three worlds, upper, middle, and lower, including the planets of the human beings, the Gandavas, the Gurudas, the great serpents, the Siddhas, Charanas, and Vidyadras, the great saints, Yamaraja, the Manus, the Yakshas, the Rakshasas, the Pish, oh my God, Pishachas, and their ma masters, and the masters of the ghost and Bhutana. He, he defeated the rule of all other planets where there are living entities and brought them under his control conquering the abodes of all he sees their power and influence. Thank you, Mataji. Please, whoever is next, Deepak Prabhu, or I can't remember the names, but please go ahead, anybody who, uh, who was on the list, if not, just unmute yourself and read the verse. Okay, I will read it. Go ahead. Hirna Kashipu, who possessed all opulence, began residing in heaven with its famous Nandana garden, which is enjoyed by the demigods. In fact, he resided in the most opulent places of Indra, the king of heaven. The palace had been directly constructed by the demigod architect Vishwakarma and was as beautifully made as if the goddess of fortune of the entire universe resided there. Great. You can, uh, thank you, Mataji. Just make a point, uh, note of a point here, what the verse is saying, you know, the architect of the, the, the chief architect in the kingdom of the devatas called Vishwakarma had um, crafted this beautiful palace, um, which Hiranyakashipu was ruling. I mean, what else can you imagine? Lord Shiva's wife Parvati once desired while sitting under the tree for a beautiful house to have. She was saying, oh my Nath, you're always, we are always sitting under the tree moving from one place to another. Like my other sister, I also desire a beautiful house and a beautiful place, so please build me one. And just as she requested, Lord Shiva only thought of once of Vishwakarma who came in and built this beautiful palace. And after the palace was built, they moved in into the house and they did a beautiful inauguration. They invited all the Vaishnavas, like what you do. They invited all the Devatas, fed them nicely. There was a nice yagya. Everybody was very happy. And only then somebody came from outside and asked Lord Shiva, what a beautiful house. I wish I had a like, house like this. And Lord Shiva handed him the key and, and there was a tree in front of that house. He walked again towards the tree and sat down under the tree. So you see the, 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 two, uh, the two different mentalities. One has all the opulences, but he's completely renounced because his mind is absorbed in the service of the lotus feet of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Whereas you have another personality who's, who has a complete conception, which is a wrong conception that everything belongs to me and I'm the Lord of all I survey as Srila Prabhupada mentions on many, many occasions. And here Prabhupada gives a very beautiful example in this purport, which I wanted to just read it for everybody. Telescopes and the other imperfect instruments of scientists are inadequate for evaluating the upper planetary system. Although such instruments are needed because the vision of the so-called scientist is imperfect, the instrument themselves was also imperfect. Therefore, the upper planets cannot be appraised by imperfect men using imperfect man-made instruments. Direct information received from the Vedic literature, however, is perfect. We therefore cannot accept the statement that there are no opulent residences on the planets other than this earth. 
So some nice points to note here. Um, Who would like to go? Anybody, please, if you could carry on reading these next three texts for us. Can I read, Guruji? Go ahead, Rasmi Ramachish, yes. The text 9 to 12, the, the steps of King Indra's residence were made of coral. The floor was bedecked with invaluable emeralds. The walls were of crystal and the columns of Veduria stone. The wonderful canopies were beautifully decorated. The seats were bedecked with rubies and silk bedding as white as foam was decorated with pearls. The ladies of the palace who were blessed with beautiful teeth and the most wonderfully beautiful faces walked here and there in the palace. Their ankle bells tinkling melodiously and saw their own beautiful reflections in the gems. The demigods, however, being very much oppressed, had to bow down and offer obeisances at the feet of Hiranyakashipu, who chastised the demigods very severely and for no reason. Thus, Hiranyakashipu lived in the palace and severely ruled everyone. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Kema Mataji, would you like to read the next uh, two verses, 13 and 14 for us? Hare Krishna. Or anybody else who's... I can read. Can I read from you? Yeah, I can read. Yes, Sorry. Imam Mataji, go ahead. Oh, my dear King Hiranyakashipu was always drunk on strong smelling uh, wines and liquors, and therefore his uh, coppery eyes were always rolling. Nonetheless, because he had powerfully executed great austerities in mystic uh, yoga, although he was abominable, uh, ab abominable, all but the three principal demigods, Lord Brahma, Lord Shiva, and Lord Vishnu, personally worshipped him to please him by bringing him various presentations with their own hands. Uh, 14. O Maharaj Yudhishthir, descendant of Pandu, by dint of his personal power, Hiranyakashipu being situated in the throne of Indra, controlled the inhabitants of all the other planets. The two Gandharvas, um, Vishwa, Vishwasu and um, Tumbur, Tumburu, I myself and the Vidyadharas, Apasras and Sages all offered prayers to him again and again, just to glorify him. Jai. Thank you. Rupa Mataji, uh, would you like to read the next two and then Chandra Chaitanya Prabhu? Yes. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Text is it text sixteen? Text fifteen and text uh, sixteen. Okay, all right. Text fifteen, being worshipped by sacrifices offered with great gifts by those who strictly followed the principles of Varna and Ashrama, Hiranyakashipu, instead of offering shares of the oblations to the demigods, accepted them himself. Text sixteen, as if. As if in fear of Hiranyakashipu, the planet Earth, which consists of seven islands, delivered food grains without being ploughed. Thus it resembled cows like the Surabhi of the spiritual world or the Kama Duga of heaven. The Earth yielded sufficient food grains, the cows supplied abundant milk, and outer space was beautifully decorated with wonderful phenomena. Thank you. Chandra Chaitanya Prabhu, please, if you could read the text 17 for us, and Mataji can read 18. I'm just going to mute everybody, Chandra Prabhu, so you can unmute yourself after that. We're going to stop at text 20 and have a five-minute discussion. Kindly unmute yourself, Chandra Chaitanya Prabhu, and you can read it. Okay. Uh, text 17. By the flowing of their waves, the various oceans of the universe, along with their tribologies, the rivers, which are compared to their wives, supplied various kinds of gems and jewels for Hiranyakashipu's use. These oceans were the oceans of salt water, sugarcane juice, wine, clarified butter, milk, yogurt, and sweet water. The water of... Does anybody see a lack of these things? <laughs> you can go to the kingdom of Hiranyakashipu. Please, yeah, go ahead. The next verse. Uh, number 18. 
the valleys between the mountain became fields of pleasure of Hiranyakashipu, by whose influence all the trees and plants produce fruits and flowers profusely in all seasons. The quantities of pouring water, drying and burning, which are all qualities of the three departmental heads of the universe, namely Indra, Vayu and Agni, were all directed by Hiranyakashipu alone without assistance from the demigods. Thank you. And the last two texts, and we will stop the recitation of verses. Yeah. Text 19, in spite of achieving the power of control in all directions, and in spite of enjoying all types of dear sense, uh, gratification in as much as possible, Hiranyakashipu was dissatisfied because instead of controlling his senses, he remained their servant. Thank you, Mataji. Anybody Thank like you. to read the last text? Hare Krishna. Thank you. Can I read, Prabhuji? Yeah, go ahead, Mataji. Text 20. Hiranyakashipu thus passed a long time, being very much proud of his opulences and transgressing the laws and regulations mentioned in the authoritative shastras. He was therefore subjected to a curse by the four Kumaras who were great Brahmanas. Thank you. Great. So not just we did the chat, we also did chat plus tonight. You know what chat plus is? Chat plus means reciting a chapter of Bhagavatam. So we had a bit of a bonus tonight. Thank you for also letting me do chat and chat plus to be able to go through these wonderful verses uh, of Srimad Bhagavatam. Any, any kind of touch with Bhagavatam in itself is, is very, very illuminating and, and purifying. So I guess we are all very clear uh, in terms of the similarity of this philosophical, beautiful verse given by Lord Krishna versus the live example given from Srimad Bhagavatam. And in some cases in our, our own examples where we still have these tendencies. But the re what was the result of Hiranyakashipu acquiring all that wealth? Ultimately, everything just came down like, you know, how, uh, uh, how the rain comes down, you know, it washes away everything. So the whole kingdom of Hiranyakashipu, he wasn't left to enjoy the kingdom. He was completely, his asunders, he was completely ripped apart by the Lord, not just like, you know, Lord is merciful in the other incarnations. He will stick an arrow in you and then you die like Ramana, you know, very merciful. You know, Lord will send his Sudarshan Chakra and you get, you know, you get liberated. But here, Lord was so merciful, more than mercy, he's using his own hands and his nails, which are like chisels and opening his, you know, uh, uh, the, the stomach of Hiranyakashipu and doing the first so-called, um, uh, what is that surgery? Uh, you know, there's that famous joke, um, I think it's Gorang Prabhu. Yeah, I think Gorang Prabhu shares that, isn't it? That somebody was about to go into an operation theater at the Bhaktivedanta Hospital in Mumbai. And he looked at the picture of Hiranyakashipu being uh, tormented by um, um, Shingadev. And he said, what is that picture? And then the doctor turned around and he said that this was the first surgery in the history and, he's, and then the patient said, what was the result? He said that, that it was, the result was success, but the patient died. So it's quite interesting that we see that although he had so much of opulence, but unfortunately he died. And, and, and this is what happens to somebody who is performing religious rituals in the name only, doing sacrifices like people fast for political reasons, doing all sorts of activities they are actually completely deriding the scriptures and doing things whimsically, which is not at all authorized by the scriptures. And that's why it's called avidhi purvakam, disregards the rules and regulations of the scripture, and they're always impudent. You cannot get success in this path or in any path if you leave scriptures. Today, I was hearing a lecture of His Holiness Radhanath Maharaj, and Maharaj was saying that, that when we read the scriptures, you know, not only our intelligence is being sharp, but our, our shelter in the Supreme Personality of Godhead becomes stronger and stronger because when we read the example of such charitra like Prahlad Maharaj, Dhruv Maharaj, Bharat Maharaj, um, Gajendra, and so many other personalities, 
who just the pro, by the process of taking shelter and having faith in the lord and in the spiritual master were able to perfect their life so here impudence is due to the illusion caused by the wealth and false prestige and we saw that example and then prabhupad gives a very nice point he says take sanyas dress without following the restrictions so prabhupad is telling us you know and we are so fortunate that we have a way to check not just one way three ways to check if we are on the right path what are the three ways guru sadhu and shastra all these three things have to be in line with each other in order for any person to be able to follow a bona fide path and some take the dress of preachers and become known as religious reformers or incarnations of god we know all these stories which goes on in the name of you know religion in india especially and and also in some parts of the world where people think okay let me turn some stone into the gold through some yogic powers and people starts to worship certain personalities but look at our fortune that prabhupad in this one verse is telling us that giving us a crystal clarity and through the example of hiranyakashipu we know what is the result of all these things unfortunately there is no end to our desires you know and and even if we do have a desire hiranyakashipu went wrong because he couldn't even consider where to go and bhagavatam is saying okay fine in the beginning stages of your devotional service you may have other desires but shrimad bhagavatam is saying akama sarva kamo va moksha kama udarite tivrena bhakti yogena yajate purusham param that a man with a broader intelligence be it a person desiring material benefit be it a person desiring uh, even liberation or anything for that matter he should by all means surrender to the supreme personality of godhead and hiranyakashipu didn't even have that kind of intelligence of course we know the history and the story of him being cursed but that's the main point in in this particular text which we were discuss, discussing and finally this believe in god some of the demoniac preachings are preached that whatever path one creates is one path there is no standard path and others concoct their own god some preach that god is dead and others say you're all god you know we i end on this beautiful past time of uh, ramananda prabhu uh, this was in amritsar i think uh, shila prabhupad uh, was to give a lecture prabhupad spoke for some time he wasn't feeling well then he invited his disciples to speak something and ramananda prabhu came up on the stage and he was speaking and trying to defeat the impersonalist philosophy in india and there were some very senior impersonalist sanyasis of that level of people who were sat in the crowd and they challenged him he said how can you say how can you say that so something i can't know the details but ramananda prabhu said that you're trying to say that the rasgulla and the stool in the street are the same thing and they kind of said yes so then ramananda prabhu said then would you would you eat both you know and they became so upset later on they went straight into prabhupad's quarter where he was resting and he complained to prabhupad that look what your disciples are preaching and prabhupad called and prabhupad called them and he said please forgive them they are they are still learning and when these people left prabhupad started laughing and he said to brahmananda what was that example about the rasgulla and stool and brahmananda prabhu gave that he said very good i like that example you know so so shri shri prabhupad you know humor was so so sweet that he would just cut through people and he knew he, he knew very well what to say and who to say and when to say and and um, so that's just another sort of past time uh, bringing uh, the point that every path is not the same you know the, the rasgulla and stool are two different things you know yeah the point they were saying it all becomes same when it goes into your body <laughs> i i i'm i'm trying and now it's coming to my my memory slowly and gradually but we will stop there i would like to hear some reflections from what you read today uh, what we all read uh, from, from bhagavatam and from this verse if anybody has any reflections any comments or questions hema mata ji saying she loves the chat plus idea yeah maybe one day we can do some chat plus as well uh, by krishna's mercy anybody like to add anything um, just in relation to this whole what, what stuck with you when you read those verses from did you see that there was a clear some familiarity which was there between the verse today and 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 the lifestyle of hiranyakashipu and 
Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Okay, shall I? So someone else wants to say? Okay, I'll say it. Well, this chapter, you know, I mean, whatever we have read up to now, it describes how Hiranyakashipu obtained power from Lord Brahma and how he misused it by harassing all the living entities. So it shows how demoniac nature can be built in. You can see the similarity of the chapter we are reading right now and the Hiranyakashipu story. Even though he achieved all the power, still he wasn't satisfied. He wanted more and more. That's what I felt. Oh my. Yeah, I mean, imagine the description we were reading, Mataji. He had, I'm just going to read it again because we have some background noises are coming through. Um, mm. Let me see. So when we were reading the description of uh, the his kingdom, we heard that, you know, I mean, what he did not have, he had a, a ocean or river of sugar cane. There was jewels, emeralds. All the devatas were going down at him. I mean, what else could you get? Imagine, he could get to the highest way, you know, one can ever imagine, you know, like right now, the amazing guy, I can't remember his name. He's a billionaire. What he earned since May, it, uh, there is an article apparently which says that him and another nine people put together can fund the vaccine of the entire world. That's how much money they have actually. And they'll still have plenty left. So, but the point is, okay, great. But is that money, is he going to take it from with him when he goes away? No, he's not. And by the time it, he realizes that point, unless he's really lucky to come in contact with one of the books of Srila Prabhupada, the devotees, then his life will change for good. And we have great examples in our community like Ford, you know, the, um, uh, what is the name of the devotee Prabhuji who's he heading the Mayapur PVOP project, uh, son of- uh, Amarish, 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 Amarish Prabhu. So Amarish, we have one of the great examples like Amrish Prabhu who dedicated their life and doing so much for, for our moment to, to progress it and completely sold out to Srila Prabhupada. We, I was talking about Tapan Mishra Prabhu who at the age of 35 became a millionaire and retired everything and living a very simple life in, in, in Mayapur, living in a small two bedroom flat with his two daughters and, and having a blast there in Krishna consciousness. Like, you know, speaking from him, hearing from him. It's just amazing uh, we have. And then you look at the life of Hiranyakashipu, so much he had. And what was the like text 18 we read? That he was just not satisfied. He, there was no satisfaction in his life. Why there wasn't a satisfaction? because there was an enmity towards Lord Vishnu. So you see, until we develop love for Lord Vishnu or Lord Krishna, that means there is some enjoying tendency in us, which is not really letting us look towards the Lord. So the moment we start to evoke a simple process of Krishna consciousness, starting with something as simple as patram pushpam phalam toyam yome bhaktya prayashati, that Whatever we are doing, you know, a leaf, a water, a flower, a fruit, if we all start offering that with love to the Lord, that will bring revolution in our life. So, and all of you are, uh, you know, a great example. You know, you're all practicing Krishna consciousness. The, your whole life is meant of a sacrifice right now. And on the other hand, Hiranyakashipu had everything, but he didn't want, forget about offering to Vishnu. He wanted to kill Lord Vishnu. He had a, that kind of enmity with the Lord. So thank you for sharing that, Bhagavati Mataji. There was somebody else who was trying to say something alongside just before or around the same time. Hare Krishna Prabhuji, I was trying to okay. say something. Um, so I'm interested in this avidhi purvakam, um, disregard for rules and regulations. Um, so don't we all fall into that category sometimes? So give me an example, uh, Hima Mataji, to just expand that further. I mean, every rule and regulation that's um, uh, depicted in the scriptures, we don't follow all of them, do we? I mean, we have tendencies. Sometimes we do, sometimes we don't. So uh, do we also then have uh, the, the demoniac qualities? Yeah, that so, indicate yeah, that's a very nice point. So uh, the answer to your question is very little yes and more of a no. The reason being yes is that Yes, there are so many rules like Pancharatrika Ridhi uh, and many aspects. Like today I was reading in the fifth chapter of the seventh canto uh, when Prahlad Maharaj, on the second time, when Hiranyakashipu takes Prahlad Maharaj on his lap and, and before he takes him on the lap, Prahlad Maharaj offers full dhanvats to his father. And we know our Acharya speaks that that dhanvat wasn't real, literally offered. Of course, he was offering to the position of his father, but more importantly, to the Supreme Personality of Godhead who's also residing in the heart of Hiranyakashipu. 
So Hiranyakashipu, at that moment, his heart melted, and it is explained by our acharyas that he had tears coming from his eyes, seeing that son in that mood. And then he sat him on his lap, and he smelled his uh, hair. And Prabhupada writes in the commentary that when a son or a disciple pays the obeisances in a loving reciprocation, sometimes the spiritual master or the father smells the face of the uh, the, the head of the of the child or disciple. So the point is, the moment he asked, okay, my son, now please tell me what is the best thing you've learned from your teachers. And then he quotes Shravanam, you know, Shravanam, Kirtanam, Vishnu, Smaranam. He quotes that verse. And during that verse, when it comes to um, Archanam, daily worship, Prabhupada talks about Narad Pancharatra Vidhi and also the Bhagavad Vidhi. And Prabhupada says that the main thing in there, Hema Mataji, coming to your point, he says that because we have accepted the main rule or the main um, uh, way of practicing bhakti in this age of Kali Yuga, which is Hare Nama, Hare Nama, Hare Nama, Eva Kevalam, Kalo Naste, Kalo Naste, Vanaste, Gati Ranyatha, everything else becomes the byproduct of those rules because just by following or doing that act sincerely, we are following all the rules, Hema Mataji. The second point Prabhupada makes in that connection, although it's not directly relevant to your question, but I thought I'll add it, is that he was saying that one may ask the question, Prabhupada writes in the purport, that what need is there to be following Pancharatrika Vidhi as enunciated by Narad Muni when the holy name is there? So Srila Prabhupada is, writes there that because we haven't perfected our consciousness, we haven't reached that stage, we are so much contaminated, but by doing archanam or by performing daily worship, there is a level of purification which comes about in our life. And there Prabhupada writes that that's why I, he used the word grahastha at least seven times within that two, three paragraphs I read. And he said, for grahasthas, it is very, very important to have deity worship. And of course, within deity worship, then Prabhupada goes on to explain the different uh, aparads from Nectar of Devotion. And one thing which really struck me, I'm so glad you asked the question. He said, if there is any fault in deity worship, if you're reciting one chapter of Bhagavad Gita every day, Prabhupada writes that all those offenses will be forgiven. So congratulations, Hema Mataji, and to everybody who's engaged in the deity worship, because there are so many things which we may not be able to follow in deity worship. But as long as we are reciting a chapter of Bhagavad Gita and chanting the holy names of the Lord, all the other rules will be taken care of. So that is the benefit, Hema Mataji, coming in line of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and the Rupa Goswamis, although they've given us all these wonderful things, but they've also given the essence of all the things. And by taking the essence, we are being... We are at a very advantageous position in our life uh, right now, Hima Mataji. I hope that answers your question, Hima Mataji. That's really useful to know, Prabhuji. Thank you. Yeah, thanks, Lenny. Thank you. Thank you so much. And by the way, that quotation about chanting a chapter of Bhagavad Gita directly comes from Rupa Goswami Nectar of Devotion book, which Prabhupada was quoting in this purport to this Vishnu Smaranam. It's a very nice, it's a seven or eight pages long purport. If you have about 25 minutes sometime tomorrow, I highly recommend go through that. And, and after reading that, you will not be the same because it's such an illuminating. And especially in Archanam, Prabhupada spends almost one and a half, two pages in, in talking about it and some really, and I was thinking about it, you know, the Gornitai worship and Ekadashi Abhishek and what we do and like how we share the pictures with each other. It's a very integral part of our, our Krishna consciousness. It really it brings me down, you know, when I do Abhishek because I'm full of Rajagun uh, and somehow with, after chanting, reading Bhagavatam, I touch the deities, I bathe them, I put oil in at them. My existence for that time, at least I can say my, my consciousness does improve to a great degree. And that's the magic of coming in line of Narad Muni and adopting this process of Pancharatrika Vidhi alongside the Bhagavad Vidhi Marg. And Prabhupada in one place in a letter, he writes to his disciple that if, if we were to choose between the two, we will go with Bhagavat, Bhagavat Mark because that's the mark which has been given to be my, my spiritual master. And that's what he emphasized, chanting of Hare Krishna and preaching others. And many times Prabhupada says, we may not have the temples, but the book distribution and writing of the book has to go on. But he does give that, he says in one place, they are both parallel lines running on the same track, Bhagavat Mark and Pancharatrika Mark actually. Both are important for, for us, our practice of Krishna consciousness. Any last comment or question before we conclude this evening's session? We have a few messages here. Uh, Bhagwati Mataji's wonderful recitation by Mataji's. 
very nice recitation. Uh, Gartha Mataji saying, very nice pastime about the first surgery. Lord Narsingha eventually merciful even to demons. Yeah, I, that was a story I heard, really nice humorous story. My sister Tripta is saying, wonderful class. Could you please clarify one thing? In one of the verses in Srimad Bhagavatam, it said that the cows were giving so much milk and the crops were also abundant. How can this be under a rule of demoniac person? Very nice point. If you all okay to wait for two, three minutes, I think Prabhupada talks about this in one of the verses. So if I have your permission, I'm going to talk. About, I, I do kind of vaguely remember what it was mentioned, but I'd rather read from the direct lotus mouth of uh, his divine grace, Srila Prabhupada, in relation to this point, which Tripta is asking um, about the milk. I think Prabhupada does comments about this somewhere. Stay with me one second. Yeah, I think in the later verse, Prabhupada talks, but here's the verse, as if in fear of Hiranyakashipu, the planet Earth, which consists of seven islands, delivered food grains without being plowed, does it resemble cows like the Surabi? So it's not the cow, it was resembling like a cow because the planet Earth was still giving to Hiranyakashipu and his kingdom. Uh, uh, it, it, th does it resemble the cows like Surabi of the spiritual world or the Kama Duga of heaven? The earth yielded sufficient food grains. The cows supplied abundant milk, to your point now, and outer space was beautifully decorated with be wonderful phenomena. So I will read the Prabhupada doesn't give a purport, but he talks about the, the idea of how this was happening in the next purport, uh, purport to text 18, and we will conclude on that. It's a short purport. Uh, the water of the seas and the oceans of this planet of which we experience are salty, but other planets within the universe contain oceans of sugarcane, juice, liquor, ghee, milk, and sweet water. Anybody interested? <laughs> I am interested in sugarcane. I do like sugarcane juice. The rivers are figuratively described as vibes of the ocean and the seas because they glide down to the ocean and seas as tributaries like the wives attached to their husbands. Modern scientists attempt excursions to other planets, but they have no information of how many different types of oceans and seas there are within the universe. According to their experience, the moon is full of dust, but this does not explain how it gives us soothing rays from a distance of million of miles. As far as we are concerned, we follow the authority of Vyasadeva and Sukadeva Goswami, who have described the universal situation according to the Vedic literature. These authorities differ from the modern scientists who conclude from their imperfect sensual experience that only this planet is inhabited by living beings, whereas the other planets are all vacant or full of dust. I think the point, Prabhupada, I'm trying to remember where he did, I re read it. I think what I vaguely remember is because it is the dharma of the earth and the cow to give the milk, uh, and they were in the fear of Hiranyakashipu, they were doing that. Because if you think all the Devi Devatas are supposed to give us whatever they are responsible for, and they were giving this in abundance, why? Because ultimately they were still empowered to give by Lord Vishnu. If they were not emp empowered, then he probably wasn't, was not allowed to give that much. So similarly, the cows, the sugar, they were all empowered to give. Even, you see, that one, that's why this verse is there in Bhagavad Gita, uh, um, uh, that, uh, what is that verse? Mame um, vamso jiva loke jiva bhuta sanatana. That all the living entities and part and parcel of the Lord. And the Lord is not impartial. He's giving to everybody. And it's a classic example, even to Hiranyakashipu, who's supposed to be the bad son of the father. He's been treated very nicely. But the end of that is bad because he decided to go away from the Lord. So from that perspective, because he had done such yogic powers and he had that benediction from Brahma, which was ultimately empowered by the Supreme Personality of Godhead, his kingdom was flourishing, but it was all superficial and all external. Inside, neither the demigods were happy, nor the, nor the demon Hiranyakashipu was happy. And what was the end result? Hiranyakashipu died, but of course, because of Prahlad Maharaj's compassion, he got liberated. So in essence, that's the answer to your question, Tripta. I hope that helps. Santosh Mataji is saying, Prabhuji, the basic difference between the... Sorry, somebody was saying something? Yes, Prabhuji, it's Krishmani. Yes, Prabhuji. Like, even in 
the Srimad Bhagavatam we read in there, it says Brahma, Vish, even Lord Vishnu, they all pay, you know, like uh, praying uh, to Hiranyakashipu because he has conquered the whole universe. So th th he become the king and that's why everybody under fear or by obligation, they were all you know, obeying him and giving respect and all these, you know, like fruits and flowers and rivers, everybody was giving in, in evidence. Yeah, so one point yeah. is there, Krishnavani Mataji, to note, it is it is not Lord Vishnu. That was read, everyone except Lord Vishnu, Brahma and Lord Shiva, they were paying obeisances, actually. That's what the, the line is, actually, uh, if you read the graph, again, once again, that was, I'll read it to you. Um, such an important... So it was in the exception because of I these people. It's strange as well, but I thought, you know, I don't know if it's true. Yeah, or... I'll, read, I'll read it for everybody again, just that part. It says here, nonetheless, because he had powerfully executed great austerities in mystic yoga, although he was abominable, all but the three principal demigods, Lord Brahma, Lord Shiva, and Lord Vishnu, personally worshipped him to please him by bringing him various presentation with their own hands. But the three... So everybody except these three, Mataji. So because otherwise there's, there will not be any question of Lord Vishnu, you know, if he, if he does that. Of course, Brahma gave him the benediction. So that's why after giving benediction, he said, I have nothing to do with you, boss. You know, you're going to die and I, I, I need to take care of my seva and, you know, I'm going back to Brahma. Lok. So thank you, everybody. Uh, Varsha Mataji saying, I also love sugarcane juice with some cinnamon. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, that's, that's, yeah, it's nice. Yeah, please read the purport to... Uh, to that verse I talked about, somebody was asking, I think Mataji shared the verse. It is 7.5 uh, uh, and 23 to 24 verse. Yeah, very illuminating purport of Srila Prabhupada. Seven, eight pages long purport. On that note, I will uh, wish, I wish all of you a wonderful Krishna conscious evening and uh, keep the transcendental vibration going of Srila Prabhupada books, either by reading them or distributing them like Chandra Chaitanya Prabhu and his wife who's been busy packing hundreds and hundreds of Bhagavad Gita over the last two days. I don't know if you know, but um, um, Mother Janvi, Janvi Harrison, the famous uh, J J J J Jeevan, Jeevan Janvi, right? Chandra Chaitanya Prabhu, that's her Chandra, name. Jeevan Das, yes. Yes. So Mataji has distributed over 350 Gitas just in, in US and of which 93 of those or 92 of those were from UK. And Chandra Chaitanya Prabhu and his good wife uh, had the privilege of shipping those 92 books and they've been packing and sending them because to keep the social distancing, of course, we can involve many of you, but he was very happy to take that service. And they've been shipping those books and sending to many people. So more opportunities will come. Stay tuned. We're going to start uh, very soon in February, some form of online book distribution to make our website famous so we can benefit the world and help Srila Prabhupada. Until then, please look after yourself. Very nicely explained. Everything. Thank you, Mataji. Thank you so much. Yes. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Padma Mali Mataji. Thank you for tuning in. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Jyoti Mataji, for your wonderful service. Thank you. Thank you. Hare Krishna, Divinam Prabhu. Hare Krishna, Mataji. Hare Krishna.